plains of Africa were covered with dense forests 3 million years ago, all this vegetation was consumed by giant antelopes, monstrous pigs, lots and lots of elephants and rhinos. They were hunted by saber-toothed tigers, giant Pachycracuta hyenas and Cosmopophytes hyenas, also known as running hyenas. Our ancestors, Gracil, Australopithecus, were also actively participating in the zoo. They could walk on two legs, but did not produce any hand tools. They were plant eaters and the size of their brains was comparable with modern chimpanzees. Two and a half million years ago, until then a relatively small gelada baboons managed to grow to a magnificent size of around 60 kilos and up to a meter tall in the crest. They had long fangs and were able to cooperate in large packs. They were aggressive and well organized. To make things worse, their diet was identical to Gracile Australopithecus. Both ate grain and seeds in a bush. Australopithecus had only 30 kilos of light weight and were one meter high, but while standing up on two legs. Expectedly enough, the environmental race was lost. Giant Gelada won. Australopithecus zero. Most of their species vanished without a trace, but some were able to adapt to the new environment. There were two different ways to achieve this. One way was to consume dry, nutrient-poor food such as sage, tubers and nuts. It was hard to digest, so there was not much competition for it. This type of Australopithecus is named Paranthropus or Robust Australopithecus. Another way was to consume flesh. Luckily enough, there was an environmental opportunity to start doing so. Two and a half million years ago, the climate started to change. It became colder and drier. The thick bush was replaced by grassland savanna. Giant angolates, also called hoofed animals, started to die out. Their place was taken by new species. These looked quite similar to modern antelopes, warthogs, zebras, elephants and rhinos. Large predators had to follow their angulate contemporaries. Giant hyenas and cyber-toothed tigers in Africa were extinct. Their place was taken by modern leopards, lions, cheetahs, spotted hyenas, jackals and African wild dogs. For a short period of time, while fauna was changing, ecological niche of predators and scavengers opened up. The vacancy was immediately taken by early hominids, our ancestors, who used this opportunity while fleeing from deadly competition with giant gelats. It's much more difficult to acquire flesh than plants. Normally, no one wants to be eaten. The flesh tends to run away or even fight back. It requires some convincing, so it's necessary to apply some intellectual effort. Hunting activity must be carefully coordinated. You need to plan ahead. And you need to gain and accumulate experience. Since our ancestors were mainly vegetarians, they had no sizable claws or fangs, so it was imperative to start using wooden sticks and stone tools. So you have to learn how, and that's where the complex brain is required. On the other hand, flesh provides more calories if compared to plants or seeds. You have a choice. You can consume a lot of plants or a little bit of meat to feel full. Let's compare how a cow and a lion behave. A cow pretty much spends all of its day chewing grass, while a lion lies in the shade enjoying himself. Our ancestors have certainly chosen the right way of life. Nowadays, every household has a comfortable sofa. All the spare time you get can be spent on socializing and learning new things which works as another incentive to develop the brain even more. Finally, plants are simply harder to chomp on. You see, plant cell has a cellulose wall, while animal cell doesn't. That's why plant eaters always have larger jaws than predators. So the jaws of our flesh-eating ancestors started to reduce in size. The relative density of teeth, bones and muscles is two times higher than the relative density of brain. As a result, the reduction of chewing system by one cubic centimeter allows to increase the brain volume by two cubic centimeters, while keeping the overall mass of one's head the same. And that is important because both the height and the spine size stayed the same. 
So as you can see, while the jaws were only reducing a little bit, the brain size was skyrocketing. So yes, the brain growth was a necessity, but there was also favorable conditions for this to occur. And approximately 2 million years ago, the brain of first hominids, who were actively hunting and producing stone tools, was already one and a half times bigger than their predecessors, Australophytes. And what about those giant gelards and Paranthropus? Well, gelards met our ancestors next time when they had already become smart and armed, which led to gelards' extinction approximately one and a half million years ago. Only one small species has survived, hiding in the desolated mountains of Ethiopia. Our vegetarian cousins, Paranthropus, managed to last much longer, but still disappeared around one million years ago. They were unable to withstand the competition against small rodents and new types of hoofed animals. While our smart and capable ancestors left Africa. But that's an entirely different story.